Hello everyone, I'm Said Mandigar. Welcome back to yet another tutorial. So great to have you here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your V-Ray engine for test and final render. In case you missed the previous episode of Bedroom Design from Scratch, please check the playlist that now you're in. Anyway, first off, let's load the render setup by clicking on this gear icon or pressing F10 on the keyboard. You see I'm using V-Ray 5. I want to reset everything, so let me change the renderer for a second and then choose V-Ray 5 again to set it up. If you're using previous versions, you can still watch this video. And if you find something new that is not included in your version, inform me in the comments so I can help you. The most important thing in the comment tab is the render output size. Under 1500 pixels is considered to be as a test render. And as you increase the size, well, it would look like a high quality render if you set up the renderer as well. Here we have an IPR option that stands for Interactive Production Rendering, and it's super fast and easy to work with. Here are some important options that I want to explain about it. This 50% icon means that frame buffer will reduce the render quality down to 15%, so just consider that it would be rendered in 50% lower quality than you expect. Super helpful option for the test rendering. Here you see a green arrow on this teapot, so it's the same as IPR option. Due to resetting the renderer to default, some options are affecting on the outcome, so I need to reset them again. You see this light source that is not in my scene, but it's lighting. Let me show you my scene. The reason is that I hidden that light, but when I reset the render setup, hidden light option will be enabled, so in this situation, each light source that is actually hidden will be enabled during rendering. Let me uncheck this and take another render to see the result. See, that's not there anymore. Before going any further, I need to change the default mode to expert mode so all the options will be appeared. Here you see that it's on the adaptive light. It means V-Ray would consider all the lights that are not affecting on the scene as disabled light. This feature can optimize the render time significantly if you have many other lights that forgot to manage them before rendering. Image Sampler Progressive mode is good for the test rendering because it renders the whole scene at once and try to increase the quality in each step. And bucket mode works best for the final rendering. 
As you increase the minimum shading rate, it will start to increase the quality of lighting. So I think the minimum could be around 8 and maximum could be around 16 or even 24. It affects on rendering speed but not as the other parameters. Pocket Image Sampler is the most important and also effective option on rendering speed and quality. If you reduce the gap between min and max subdivs, you will have a better rendering quality. What I recommend is to keep the min subdivs on 1 and just change the max subdivs like 8, 10, 12 or even 14. If you have some details in your scene, you can set the max subdivs on 10, but if you really want to pop them up, you can set it on 14. Just notice that it increases the rendering time significantly. If you increase it more than that, the rendering process take much more and the final quality don't really worth that rendering time. If you're using the previous version of V-Ray, here is another noise threshold, right? In this version, they merged them together so you just have one of them. This time they added blue noise sampling. Reducing the noise threshold amount will reduce the scene's noises. What I recommend for the test rendering is 0.01 and for your semi-renders 0.008 and for the final render is 0.005. Less than that doesn't make any special difference. Image filter. There are a lot of different image filters. Basically, I use two of them. Catmull ROM and Langsos filter. Catmull ROM is the sharpest one, but I think it's not good for the shots that are showing the window or glass that the light comes through it. It makes it over bright. The one that I use the most is the Langsos filter because it makes a balance between the sharpness and softness. If you reduce the size amount, it gives you a sharper result. I tested it a few times and I like it to be around 0.7 or 0.8. In color mapping, I use Reinhardt because it allows me to make a balance between two other modes. Multiplayer controls the dark areas and burn value controls the brightness. So by reducing them, you can take control of general lighting in your scene. Subpixel mapping will remove the black pixels that are going to be generated around the overbright areas. It appears around the light sources or window glass. Let me close all the tabs. Okay, now it's time to talk about the camera. As you see, now the scene is orange because of my lighting temperature, right? One of the coolest V-Ray feature is the auto white balance. It corrects the colors and try to make it look natural. Now you see that it's fixed. So by just disabling the hidden light and enabling the auto white balance, I could adjust it in a very short amount of time. Next step, GI.
try to keep the primary and secondary engines on Bradforth and light cache. Ambient occlusion will reduce the soft shadows around the objects. Also, there are cool features like rendering the lights so you can see how much this effect in your rendering. You can set the radius around 1 cm to 5 cm. I like it when it's on 2 cm. Also, if you have a dark side or dark edges, you can reduce the intensity. Sample size will determine how soft or hard the light should be. Increasing it will help producing a soft light, but you know, it's intangible. If you set the memory limit on zero, then there won't be any limitation in using your RAMs. V-Ray try to use as much as RAM you have. It helps to use the maximum capability of your computer. Render elements will save your life in post-production process. I need to make a separate video and explain everything about these elements. But for now, let's just select some of them so I can use them in my post-production. I'm going to show you the result, but before that, I want to talk about the sponsor of this video. Skillshare is an online community for everyone that decided to take a step forward and start to learn new skills. Some of you were born with facilities and some of you are developed through years of training and experience. So here is the opportunity to speed up your learning process by the unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes to explore new skills, deepen existing passions and upgrade your knowledge and get lost in creativity. You can start learning whenever you are in a good mood cause there isn't any pressure or complex schedule. Just you and your mentor with a playback button. Also your mentor is always there to answer your questions. The link is in the description. And the best part is the first thousand people to use this link will get a free trial of membership so you can explore your creativity. As you see, I picked up another class that is also one of the best classes on Skillshare. This class is for everyone who is interested in interior design and applying this knowledge to their personal space. I highly recommend joining this class. Okay, here is the final result using these inputs. I think the quality is good enough for a semi-final render, so you will see how I control and adjust the lights, and also the material quality is now clear. In this stage, if I think that the material is good, in the final render they will look even better. So now I can decide what I need to do as the final adjustment for the lights and materials. I can see the textures are clear and reflections and refractions are okay, not too dark nor bright, and it feels like a night scene. I really don't like to make the scene dark. I think the night scene means you light up your scene more with the internal light sources like different V-Ray lights. For the final rendering, I prefer to increase the output size up to 4K size cause it really helped my material to look as great as I made them. 
Also the dark value will be calculated better, so we will have a wider range of shadows. If you're running out of time or you're on a budget, try to render some parts first. If everything was great, then start your final rendering. And after you finish rendering, you have V-Ray Frame Buffer Adjustment tab to do some primary post-production before you save your shots. That's it for me guys, hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please like this video if it was helpful and subscribe to my channel and click on that bell to be notified about the next video. See you soon, have fun!